Welcome Business 330 Business Finance Online students. This is Professor Hassey again, live and in color from our business finance studios in Claremont, California. Today's date is Monday, April 18th, 2022. And we begin week three of our eight week extravaganza, talking about the time value of money, the past, the present and the future in finance. The first two weeks, we've gone over the definition of finance and financial statements and analysis. You've completed that discussion with your assignment number one posting on Sunday. I'll be posting those grades no later than Thursday of this week. You have assignment number two that has been posted this week, which will be problems that going over the examples of the time value of money, future value, present value, present value of cash flows, all in must to do calculations that we're going to use in our future weeks in this course. I have this lecture video, we'll go over that definition, show you a video, and then my follow-up weekend or update video at the end of the week, we'll go over certain problems in chapter five uh, that you have a spreadsheet in your Blackboard for week three to review. But be first, we be gone. We want to make sure you understand how everything's going in this class. Remember, we usually have our Wednesday evening Zoom student hours. This week, in week number three, we will unfortunately not have our Wednesday week week student hours. I'll be traveling this Wednesday. I'm heading back east on Wednesday for a family event. Uh, a nephew is graduating from college this weekend. So I will not be available this Wednesday, but if you need to speak with me, I can. I will have access to Zoom and to materials on Thursday through Sunday. So please, if you need to talk to me, you have some questions, either post to the discussion forum in Blackboard, send me an email, or just send me a request for a Zoom session uh, after Wednesday and I'll be more than happy to meet with you. But no student hours this Wednesday, April 20th, I'll be traveling. So as we begin our studies this week, uh, make sure you post your assignment number one so I can get those grades to you this week. And don't forget you have assignment number two this week. It's already posted in Blackboard. It's due next Sunday, April 24th. And then next week, we complete our first four weeks of our course with a midterm examination on chapters one through seven which will be posted next week. But first, let's take a look at a video explaining the time value of money. So if you've taken any accounting courses or any basic finance courses, you've probably been exposed to something uh, called the time value of money. So we hear this concept a lot and it's something very important to the foundations of finance and to some degree accounting. So we want to talk about, well, what does this mean from a conceptual point of view? What it, What is the concept here? What are we talking about when we say that money uh, has a time value? So so let's let's look at this through an example. So let's let's take an example here. Let's say that I offer you you two options. OK, now one of the options is going to be that I give you one hundred dollars cash today, hundred dollars today. And then in the other option, we're going to say that I give you, let's change colors here again. Let's say I give you $100 one year from now. One year from now. Now, let's just assume for a moment that when I say I'll give you the $100 one year from now, uh, that that's certain. That's not something that, that I might not pay it or, or something like that. It's, it's guaranteed. You either get $100 today or you got $100 one year from now, but either way, there, there's no risk associated with it. You're going to get the, the $100. So let's look at these two options. Now, which would you prefer? Now, you might say, well, I just prefer the $100 today because I just I just want the money. I have something I'm already going to spend it on. But let, let's just forget about that for a moment. Let's assume that you don't have necessarily have anything you want to buy, but you do want the $100. Well, you, you might think, well, I'm indifferent. Uh, whether I get it today or whether it's one year from now. But but let's think about this because the money has a time value. Now now let's illustrate this. So let's let's 
Let's look at a little timeline here. So here, in this option, we're getting the hundred dollars right here, which we'll call we'll call this that's today, right? Right here. This is today. And then over here, uh, this is this is one year from now. One year. Uh, now let's let's go down uh, to our other option, and we'll have a little timeline. And again, we've got uh, right here is is today, and you're not getting anything today. There, there's nothing here uh, because you're getting it one year from now. You're going to be handed uh, right here a hundred dollars. Now let's let's think about things here for a moment. So when we get the one hundred dollars here today. What can we do with that money? Well, you could go out and spend it or something. But let's just assume that you do, you didn't spend it. Well, what else could you do? You could invest that money. Now, let's say that you invested it in something and you, you ended up getting uh, a 5% return. Let's say you took it to the bank and uh, you, you got a 5% return on, on some kind of investment. Now, what's going to happen is that at the end of that year, you don't have a hundred dollars anymore. Well, what do you have? Uh, you're going to have a hundred times 1.05, which is going to be uh, that's going to be a hundred and five dollars. So we see that if you get the money today, if you get it sooner rather than later, there's a value to getting it earlier because it can be invested to earn a rate of return, and then at the end of the period you end up having more money than what you started with. Now, when we look at the other option where you get $100 at the end of the year, you didn't have the option uh, of investing it here uh, because you didn't have the money. So when you get the money sooner rather than later, it has more. there's more value there because you can go ahead and invest the money and earn a return on it. So that's what we're talking about uh, when people say uh, that the time value of money uh, they're just basically saying that money is something that if you're looking at cash flows, uh, cash flow today or cash flow in the future, uh, a cash flow today, all else equal, the same amount, is going to have more value because it can be invested for that, that return. Uh, so now you might be thinking, well, how does this, how does this have real world applications or, or what do we think about? But let's, let's say we've got some project that the firm is thinking about. That project, you might say, okay, well, we're going to uh, buy this machine and, and it would uh, get, get generate cash flows over a period of, let's say, five years. So you can look at these, these different years and you can go and say, okay, here's, here's year one, two, three, four, five. And you can say, okay, well, we estimate that in year one, if we get this machine, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a hundred dollars in cash flow in year two 175 uh, year three 200 uh, 300 and then let's say in the last year it only it generates 50 but what you can do is say okay well now we, we know we've got we, we're estimating these cash flows but now what we want to do is we want to say okay well like for example here in year five that fifty dollars, we can't just add all these all these together and say, okay, well now we've got this sum and this is how much it's gonna is gonna generate from this price. We have to take into account that fifty dollars five years from now is not worth the same as fifty dollars today. So what we're gonna do is account for this uh, time value uh, of money and uh, TV, maybe not the best uh, little acronym I have there, but the time value of money. We're gonna look at this. And we're going to say, well, what if we can just go ahead and say we earn a 5% interest on all our investments? Then we can say, okay, let's let's figure out what that $50 five years from now is worth to, in terms of today's dollars. And when we do that, what we're doing is called discounting cash flows. So we're discounting cash flows. So those those... That 50 here, this is a cash flow in year five. And what we're doing is we're saying, what's the rate of return we could have earned on that, on money today? Let's say 5%, 7%, whatever it is. And then it, let's use that to go ahead and, and discount this number and say, so it's going to be something less than 50 because maybe it's you know 30 or 35 or whatever, yeah, depending on your discount rate, could have been invested today to get 55 years from now. So when we talk about discounting cash flows, 
uh, what we're doing is we're using the, the time value of money concept and some other formulas that we're going to talk about in other videos uh, to take future cash flows and figure out uh, what are they worth today. So there's a very basic video taken from our week three uh, Blackboard file folder that basically explains the concept of money, what it's valued today versus money in the future, what's its discounted value over a period of time. And we're going to learn these calculations in chapter five, and you'll be tested on these, assessed these in assignment number two. So here's our Blackboard for this week. You're pretty well used to seeing this now, hopefully. The assignment number two has now been posted. You can download one of those two files, a Word doc file or a PDF file. They're the same. And do your work for assignment number two. If you've gotten an extension or have yet to post assignment one, please do so as soon as possible. Post it to assignment one file folder, and I'll get those grades to you this week. But our subject is time value of money, this assignment for this week. If we go to week three in our Blackboard, there's our learning assignments for this week. The lecture video, which I am now producing now, and I'm an hour late. It's now six o'clock on Monday, April 18th, sorry. The chapter five is the time value of money, which is also located in the Blackboard file folder with a PowerPoint. We have a review problem, which we're gonna see in just a minute, an in-class review spreadsheet. And then you have your assignment, what you need to do by next Sunday, April 24th, assignment number two about the topics of chapter five. So we open up that file folder in week three. Here's our agenda, which you just saw at the beginning of this video. Here's our learning assignments again. Here's a nice description of chapter five, highlights of it. There's a, a, a PowerPoint of chapter five right here that can summarize all the key concepts of chapter five, a little video explaining how a lottery is like the time value of money, if you're interested. Then some additional problems, and they're all summed up kind of in the in-class review sheet that I have. And then various videos talking about, and this is the one we just saw, the time value of money concept explained, and other videos along those lines if you so choose. I'll be adding an in-class review file folder, which is this file folder that we're going to work on now. Okay, so here is uh, that spreadsheet. It's located in week three. It's the in-class review or class review spreadsheet. It's examples of what these videos are talking about in, in week three. Examples of the future value of money, examples of the present value of money, discounting, present value of cash flow, and amortization. These are all things that I have questioned, have questions for you in assignment number two this week, and you can study or read chapter five and look at the review problems. These are some of the review problems and the highlights of those review problems. The solutions are also provided in Blackboard. So remember, uh, there's three things to remember as the video said, when you have money today, in this example, $100, what is $100 going to be in the future? It's called the future value of money. And to do that, you need three things. You need principal, the amount of dollars invested, the interest or the return on that principal, and the time period involved in how long you're going to invest the money. Is it a year? Is it one month? Is it three years, five years? The time period is, is also important. Principal, interest, and time. Remember, the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity, equity being defined as stock and retained earnings. Assets are capital. They create the cash flow to generate revenue, profits, so you can pay back liabilities and reward your stockholders with dividend or keep the profits for future growth. These assets generate a return on investment. How long you invest in them, principal. What's the return off that investment? and the number of years you own the asset. If you remember from accounting, remember many assets are determined by, in ownership length by their depreciation life, how long you can depreciate those assets over time. So let's take a look at this example on the spreadsheet. I have $100 today. 
and it's going to, I'm going to be able, I'd like to know what this investment is, is 8% a year return. What is this $100 going to be in value, in future value, in 10 years or in 20 years at 8% a year? One of the my, nice things about having spreadsheets, and one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to all do in this class is get to know to use spreadsheets. It's a great tool to do economics, to do finance, to do business. If I go to the formulas function, formulas menu in Blackboard, and bring up the function menu item, you'll see a list of functions that this spreadsheet can do. I want to go to the category financial, and I want to go to FV, future value. This is a logarithm where I can put in information to determine what $100 is going to be in 10 years at 8%. Remember that 8% is compounding after every year. If it was just simple interest, I would just take 8% times $100 times 10 years. That's simple interest. There's no compounding at all. But if I'm compounding the interest, which is probably most cases the investment, I need this formula. Formulas, function, future value. And remember, the interest rate is how long, what's the interest rate we expect to return off this investment? 8%. The number of periods in this problem example, it's 10 years. The payment, there's no payment. It's just a one-time investment, which its present value today is negative $100. Why do I put a negative? Well, watch this little function key here. If I type in 100, I end up getting a negative number. The number $215 is, is correct. But I think to just make it easier for us to distinguish, we make minus 100. So our answer will be in positive. It's just like we're telling the computer software we're going to be spending $100 today at 8% over 10 years. What is its value going to be? $215.89. If we take that and go 20 years, formulas, function, financial, future value, The rate now is still 8%. The number of periods is no longer 10, but 20 years. And the present value is still minus $100. $466.10. So if I put $100 today, and invest it over 10 years at 8% a year, I will have $215.89 in 10 years. That's the future value of $100 at 8%. What would it be if I cut the interest, and this is more like it according to today's interest rates, 4%. Formulas, function, financial, FV, future value. Oh, passed it. Now it's 4%, 10 periods, still minus 100 investment today. $148.02, the investment or the return is lower, thus we return less money. If I slide this formula over, watch this, to this column and now convert this to 20 periods, 20 years. Oh, I did it in the wrong one, sorry. Screw that one up. Let's go back and change this. Make this original 10 years. There we go, then we'll make this 20 years. I'm actually gonna make some more money over that additional 10 years, not much more, because the interest rate is lower. $219.11. So that's the definition of future value. It's a simple formula, formula, function, financial, bring up the interest rate, number of periods, and your investment as a negative number, 
and you get your figure. That's future value. I ask you to do a couple of these in assignment two. Present value is what if I have $215.89 in the future, what is it worth today? All right. In other words, what is the future value of that money? $215.89. Okay. Well, again, we'll use our same interest rates as we did in the prior problem. It's just now we're taking the $215.89 and what is called discounting it back to today where we started. We use a different calculation, formula, function, financial, no longer FV or future value, but PV, present value, because we're going back in time. We're not going into the future. We're going back in time. Again, the rate is still 8%. The number of periods is still 10. Now under future value, we put the minus 215.89. In other words, I'm taking $215.89, that's money in the future, 10 years, and discounting it back at 8%. What is its value? Should be a no-brainer, 100 bucks. That's the present value of $215.89. That's called discounting, going back in time. Let's do the same thing for the 4%, the 148.02. Formula, function, financial, present value, PV. Now our rate is 4% discount rate number of periods is still 10, and the future value is 148.02, minus 148.02. Its present value is $100. So that's called present value, where you use a different function. The present value, or PV function, compared to the FV function going into the future. Interest rate, principal, and time are put in, and you can calculate those future amounts. Try downloading this spreadsheet and try to do these other two present values for 20 years out and see if you get $100. Another thing that you'll be doing, and it's kind of explained in that video we just saw, is I make an investment, and that investment develops cash flow into the future. $200 at the end of year one, $400 at the end of year two, and $300 at the end of year three. In other words, $900 of total return over three years given to us in the future. Let's say we're making an investment of $700 today to create that $900 return cash flow into the future. Is this a good investment? All right, well, let's see. If our cost of capital, what it takes to get this money, our discount rate is 4%, is this a good investment? So all we need to do is take the present value of these numbers into the future and add them up and compare them to the $700 investment today. Formula, function, financial, present value, remember we're discounting here, going discounting numbers to today's value, PV, and now the interest rate is 4%. The number of periods is one, we're getting this money at the end of year one, and the future value is minus $200. The present value today at a discount rate of 4% is $192.31. Let's do it again for year two. Formula, function, financial, present value. Four percent. But now it's after two years, two periods. And the future value is four hundred dollars. That has a present value of three sixty nine eighty two. 
You know, you can do these on your phone, which I prefer you not to. You can do these in a financial calculator with the PV function codes, but it's so much easier to do them on a spreadsheet here and use the functions available to you through your spreadsheet. Year three, $300 for year three. Formula, function, financial, present value, 4%. Now it's three years out and our future value is $300. 26670. So let's add all these up. Looks like we're going to make $828.83 at a cost of capital of 4%. That future value of $900 received over the next three years has a present value discounted at that 4% of $828.83 compared to our investment to create that cash flow. We're making what is called net present value. We're making a profit on that money. Now, this is a very important number for future work in this class. Trust me. There's another way of doing this. Remember, this was kind of cumbersome. One year, two years, three years, you're gonna see some problems later on in our class where you have to do this going out 20 years, 10 years. That's gonna get a little cumbersome. Well, our spreadsheet allows us to combine all the years into one calculation. Formula, function, financial, and now we look for the calculation N, PV, net present value. This combines all those years into one calculation, NPV. The rate is still 4%. But the value is this. Under the value line, all you have to do is paint year one cash flow, two, and three. Notice I put in cells D25 to D27. It's now seeing, see it right here, $200, $400, and $300. It's going to combine those three calculations we just did into one number. And we get, wow, 828.83. So there's two ways of doing it. Year by year, using the present value function, or combining all three years using the NPV function. Either way is fine. But when we're dealing with multiple, multiple years of an investment, the discounting can be much easier using the net present value function. A lot of phones and calculators don't have that NPV function. Spreadsheets do. That's a little helpful hint. Okay, so now we've seen future value, present value, discounted cash flow. And there's one other topic that you need to be familiar with from chapter five. It's called amortization. And I'm sure a lot of you have experience with this and you don't even know it. When you buy a car and you make equal payments on your car loan every month for three years, that's an amortized loan. If any of you have bought a house and you make equal mortgage payments every month for 20 years, that is amortization. The definition of amortization is to pay off a debt in equal payments over a specific, specific time period. Now, in this class, I'm not going to ask you to do these graphs or these spreadsheets doing these calculations, but I do need you to understand what amortization represents. You don't have to worry about the calculations, just what it means, but I'm gonna show you the calculations just so you see it. Here's our example. We're gonna buy a car for $40,000. These days, that's a rather cheap car, if you can get it. We're gonna make a down payment on that car of $2,000 and we're going to ask to borrow money for four years, monthly payments for four, year, four years. And we're gonna take out financing 
for $38,000 a year. The interest rate that the credit union, the rental, the uh, bank, the finance agency for the car automobile company is charging us three and a half percent a year on that interest rate, on that loan, three and a half percent, which is these days, if you have very good credit, that's the going rate, three and a half percent. Well, we need to do two things before we can figure out what our chart here is going to look like. First of all, we have to determine what is our interest rate per period. Remember, this is a four-year car loan in monthly payments. Our interest rate is 3.5% per year. So if we're making monthly payments, that means there's going to be 12 payments during a, a calendar year. At an interest rate of 3.5% for that year, if we take 3.5%, I'm just going to put this in decimal, 0.035, and divided by 12, 12 months, our interest rate per period is in decimal 0.00291 Notice the chart already did some work here. That means what is going to be our monthly payment on this $38,000 loan with 48 payments, four years, 12 months a year, at an interest rate per, per period of 0 0.00291, blah, blah, blah. Formula, function, financial, and now we look at payment, PMT. There it is right there. Payment. Calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. The constant interest rate is 3.5% a year constant payments, you're making the same payment every month for 48 months. Hit OK. Our interest rate per period now is 0 0.00291666. Wow. The number of periods is 48. Four years, 12 payments a year. Our present value is we're borrowing minus $38,000. What's our monthly payment? 48 payments of $849.53. We're going to make 48 payments of $859.53 over four years to borrow $38,000 at 3.5%. This is what, when you go and borrow money at a car at a car dealership, or when you buy a house, your bankers, based on your FICO score, which determines your credit rating and your amount of interest, they that's how they calculate these numbers for your monthly payments on your loans. And then they check that with your income and see if you qualify and can afford the payments that you now have to make based on your income and your take-home pay. That's how it all works. So notice I have filled in this chart as we've developed our interest rate per period and our payment. We're borrowing $38,000. Our first payment is going to be $849.53. We're going to take our interest rate of 0 0.00291667 and multiply it by our outstanding balance in payment one, 38,000. And that's our interest rate for that first period. We subtract now that interest from our payment to get the principal payment for that first payment of our loan. The difference is 738.69. And now we take 738.69 and subtract it from our balance. And at the end of our first payment on this car loan, we now owe 37,261.31. That transfers over to our second period. We make the same payment. Naturally, our principal and amount owed is down a little bit, so our interest drops. We subtract that interest from our principal, that goes up, and there's our new balance. And so on for 48 payments. And when it's all done, we owe nothing. We've paid back the loan. We've paid back the principal of $38,000. We pay $2,777.35 in interest. And there's our total payments over the 48 periods. 
this is an amortization. This is an amortized loan. Equal payments over time where the principal is increasing after every payment and the interest is decreasing after every payment because we're whittling down the balance. So you can see at the end of the first year of payments, oh, I still owe $28,992.07. At the end of the second year, I owe $19,663.76. At the end of the third year, I owe $10,003.67. And finally, at the end of the fourth year, I've paid it off. Again, you do not have to worry about calculating this schedule, but I wanted to show it to you because you see this all the time when you borrow money in an amortized loan, a series of equal payments. Why amortized loan? Because this protects the institution that's lending you the money. The collateral on this loan is the car. If you don't, if you can't make all these payments, they'll take your car from you. But if you can make all these payments of 849.53, the bank begins to get a return on their investment immediately. They start collecting interest after the very first payment. So they're getting their risk covered in two ways. The collateral is if you don't pay, they take your car and they get the car for its value. In most respects today, that car probably will lose value after a while, but still they still have that as collateral. But the thing that ensures that they're going to be getting their return is they set up the payment schedule where they begin making a return on their capital, the amount of money they lent you, immediately. And that's what's so attractive about an amortized loan. Next week, we talk about bonds and stocks in chapters six and seven. Bonds are unamortized loans. When a company issues a bond, they only pay interest until maturity. And then at maturity, they pay back the principal. Why does that happen for bonds? Because the collateral is the entire assets of the company borrowing the money in the bond. They have collateralized all their assets. That gives them the risk managers of that bank or that institution, pretty good. But in a borrowing of $38,000, the bank wants to make sure they start getting their money right away. And that's why this occurs. So I'm gonna save this and I'm going to post it to Blackboard and you can review this, even try doing the numbers on your own. I said the, the interest rate here was 6%, it actually was 4%, so let's change that. There we go, okay. And take a look at it, but you'll be seeing questions about both all these three issues, future value, present value, present value of cash flow, and amortization value in assignment number two. So take a look at the spreadsheet. And where this spreadsheet is, I'll bring it up right now. So here's our Blackboard site. And if you go to week three, open up the time value of money file folder, you'll see right at the top, week three class review spreadsheet. And here will that file be that you can download and review what we just talked about as examples of future value, present value, present value of cash flow, and amortization all topics, all disciplines, all calculations that you'll be doing next week and every week remaining in our class. So try to get a handle on that. And you're practicing all these in assignment number three, or excuse me, number two. So that's our lecture for this evening, week number three. I'll be back in touch with you on Friday with our weekend or our update video. There'll, again, as I mentioned earlier, there'll be no class or student student hour class or session this Wednesday. But if you need to get a hold of me, you have other platforms to do that. Have a great week, everybody. Look for those assignment one grades around Wednesday or Thursday, probably Thursday. And we'll see you next time. Adios.